everybody, this is Erin Lincoln and I'm here for Stamp Affair on this Saturday. Today I'm going to teach you how to do ribboned back die cuts like you see here on this card. There's top notch twill behind the Make a Wish cake dies. It gives a really great texture. So we're going to go ahead and start. As you can see I kind of chose an ombre theme here with Scarlet Jewel, Autumn Rose, and Sweet Blush. So we're just going to get started. I have some soft stone cardstock cut down to an A2. I'm using this little white piece that's actually on the bottom of my card. I'm not going to hear it now. I'm using it to line up my cake dies just so I can eyeball where I need to put those dies. I'm going to take it away here in a second. It doesn't need to be run through the die cut machine. Get everything where you want them kind of tricky to be able to lay that plate down directly on top without moving them, but it can be done. A little bit of practice, steady hands. It's always a little nerve-wracking no matter what. All right, go ahead and run it through. So again, we're running through Make-A-Wish dies on an A2 cut of soft stone cardstock, and this is our base. You're not going to need the actual die cut pieces. So go ahead and save those, put them away. I keep all my dies and cuts in CD envelopes like Nicole showed us maybe a year ago. It's very handy. So when it goes, and I have, I have see, I cut on my C plate. You can do it, but uh, it's not recommended, so I'm fixing it. Shame on me. Cut on your B plate or your A plate. But we're just not going to go back. What's done, done is done, right? Okay, we, I have one more die cut that I need to make. These are the bow and bell dies, the bows. Love these things. Just on uh, Stamper Select white cardstock. Run it through and put them to the side. We'll get to those later. But what's nice about this project is I use both of these dies on one card. Now if they get stuck in the dies, and this happens a lot, your die cuts, just get a little piece of tape wrap it around your finger and use it to kind of tack out your paper pieces. No harm, no foul. Easy way to get the job done. All right, put those aside. All right, now if you've watched any of my Make It Monday videos, you'll know I'm super precise about adhesive. Not really, at all. So I am just putting adhesive on the back of my negative piece, my card front, haphazardly. It's time to bust out the top notch twill. I have Sweet Blush, Autumn Rose, Scarlet Jewel. Three tones in the same color family. And I'm going to go ahead and just back these. And remember, I have adhesive on the back already. Whatever you have, uh, score it tape would work well too. Stuff like a glue stick is probably not the best application for this one. And you just keep it on the roll as not to waste any ribbon. And you just put it over the open place, space on your card, and making sure your ribbon pieces are either slightly overlapping or right up next to each other. You don't want anything in the background showing through. And on the edge, try to cut it away as much as possible so when this is glued to the card front, the actual, you know, foldable card you don't really see that edge. You want to kind of hide it as much as possible. Make a little more sense here in a little bit. Okay, we're just wrapping up with our Scarlet Jewel. Top notch twill, which is my favorite of the ribbon. Just kind of matches my personality, I guess. I'm not big into bows, but it gives it a little something extra. All right, this is Autumn Rose, and again, on the edge of the card, I'm trying to stay away from the with the ribbon, get it close to the die cut as possible. And the same deal, just laying strips down, right butted up against each other. And I have a little sliver left, so I'm going to do another strip. Now a tip for you, if you go ahead and apply all your ribbon and you realize something's showing through, back it with cardstock that matches your ribbon. It'll hide it a little bit better. Sweet Blush is the last one for the top tier of our cake. 
really like the ombre theme. I've seen a lot of ombre cakes online um, for inspiration. Mostly it's the inside of the cake, but I've seen a couple that have the frosting in an ombre pattern color scheme. And there's lots of uh, colors in the paper tray ink color family where you can do this. So you can get lots of different tones. I like how pretty that is. It actually looks a little frosted, doesn't it? Alright, there's my white card base. I'm just making sure nothing shows through. There's no white in between the ribbon, meaning I didn't get the ribbon close enough and I'm good. Alright, here's my little grounding piece. It's a piece of white cardstock. Four and a quarter by one and a quarter. I'm just going to adhere that down because it's time to actually get stamping. Right down to the bottom. Now on my prototype card I didn't have this one and I uh, misstamped and I covered it up and I ended up liking the cover up more than the <laughs> original card so that's how that got to be there. I were just gluing, adhering our front panel to our card. Lots of cardstock, excuse me, lots of adhesive. And down it goes. Again, just an A2 size. And because that ribbon on that one edge, we took care not to push it all the way to the side, you don't really see it on the right hand side there. Okay, this is a make a wish stamp, it's a cake stand. I want a gray tone, so I'm using True Black ink, but I'm going to stamp it off and then the second generation of stamping is going to be more of a gray. I don't have soft stone ink yet. That hasn't come for us at the point where we're filming this video, so got to improvise, improvise and it's a good little trick to have up your sleeve. This birthday stamp is from Big Birthday Wishes. There's that. Okay, I have the uppercase block die alphabet on my card in smoky shadow bitty dot pattern paper. I already die cut it out. And this is just to show you I do store and cut apart my alphabets. I have them in quick cuts folders, which you can get on Amazon. And I like to when I'm using pattern paper to line them up and die cut them in a line so the pattern stays consistent across the letters. It doesn't look like it's obvious I cut, you know, jumble. The pattern is consistent throughout. And because I have this nice horizontal line with that white strip of cardstock, it's easy to line them up. Just kind of position them when I, where I want them. All right, I don't have adhesive on the Y, so we're going to go ahead and do that. A little squirt tape, just a little sliver. Right there. Now, I would normally use a liquid adhesive, but because we are adhering straight onto the ribbon, I needed something a little more mm, dry. It's dry right away. It's more secure for me, and that's why I'm going with a score it tape. There you go. Sticks nicely to ribbon. A little overhang because I'm just rolling it back behind so you don't see that glossy glue adhesive. And everything else is uh, here down. I just fast forward through that. It's about as exciting as watching paint dry. They do that. So, a little magic of editing. This happy is from the Big Birthday Wish, excuse me, the Big Birthday Wishes set as well. And apparently, we're wishing this person a very, very, very happy birthday. And we have one last step. Remember those die cut bows that we uh, die cut at the beginning? Keeping with our ombre theme, we're going with Autumn Rose and Scarlet Jewel. Autumn on the small, Autumn Rose on the small one. Put 
that aside and Scarlet Jewel on the smaller one. And you see, you'll see when these get adhered to the card on the cake tiers how well the, the two graduated sizes look because the cake has graduated sizes as well. Alright, all the stamping is done. We are almost fin finished with our card. I just love it. I'm going to probably reproduce this card quite a bit for birthdays in different colors. More score tape. Again, works well on the ribbon and the cardstock. So cute. And we need just a little bit of dimension. Let's go for some buttons. Another ro autumn rose and another scarlet jewel. One smaller than the other. I was laughing at myself when I was pulling these buttons because I really try to pull buttons with only two holes instead of four. So I don't have to do so much work stringing them, which is, you know, just kind of ridiculous if you think about it. Made me laugh though can't laugh at yourself, right? What are you going to laugh at? And there you go, our finished card with an ombre ribbon back die cut opening. Anyone would love to receive this for their birthday. And like I said, I'm going to make this a few times. It could work for a lot of different color schemes. Okay, see you soon with some more videos for Stamp Affair. I'll be back. Mm -hmm.